Hey everybody, welcome to the Hamakua Homestead. If you're new here, my name is Tiffany and today we are fermenting. I have never made any type of kvass before, so this is another new experiment, not just for you guys, but for me too. Although kvass is originally a Russian drink made from rye, there are all kinds of recipes all over the internet that you can find, including beet kvass, pear kvass, and today, honeydew melon kvass. This is a very, very healthy and supposed to be a very tasty treat. It is a probiotic drink. So those probiotics are gonna be really good for your gut health, good for your enzymes. It's gonna improve your intestinal health and it's gonna help get rid of those bad microbes that are inside your guts. And as we have already learned, gut health links to brain function and all kinds of other functions inside of our bodies as well. For today's recipe, we're gonna go ahead and get started by cutting up our cantaloupe. Nope, just kidding, honeydew melon. <laughs> Go ahead and cut up your honeydew melon any way that you like. I just cut mine into kind of large bite-sized pieces. I was going for around a third of the glass jar that I'm using and I got pretty close with slightly less than half of a honeydew melon, minus the bits that I was snacking on. Then we're gonna go ahead and add half of a teaspoon of salt. Try to stay away from the iodized stuff a quarter cup of kombucha or whey or any other starter that you like. Why add kombucha, you ask? Well, that is going to help the fermentation start and process a lot faster because kombucha is already fermented and it already has a head start on making those good bacteria that you're looking for in this probiotic drink. Two tablespoons of raw honey. And the honey, it provides food for those bacteria to eat while it's fermenting. And four cups of purified water. Now that we have our jar all filled up with our contents to start our kvass, we're gonna go ahead and put a lid on it. I'm using a pickling lid today. This one has a vent so that um, no dirt and junk can get in, but the gases and everything that it's gonna create can go ahead and escape. That makes it so that we don't have to burp it as much um, as if we were using a regular canning lid. We can do that as well. We would just have to come along and open it up and make sure that the gases have a chance to escape so that we don't have an exploded jar. So we're just gonna go ahead and stick our lid on there. I'm gonna go ahead and give it a little shake around. Make sure that honey is all wiggled around. So we're just gonna go ahead and leave this for anywhere from two to seven days, um, just depending on the temperature, the humidity in the air, and all of the other components that are involved with fermentation. We don't want it to be in direct sunlight and we don't want it to get too warm. It is summertime right now, so that might be a little bit tricky for a lot of us, but we're gonna do our best. If you do not have a um, fermentation lid of any sort, every day, many, probably a few times a day, you're gonna wanna go ahead and come through 
and open it up, let those gases out, and close it back up again. But this guy should, in theory, prevent me from having to do that, but I will be keeping an eye on it throughout the days. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep a good eye on this. I did leave a lot of headspace to leave room for expansion, leave room for bubbles. We don't want it exploding all over the counter if avoidable. And we're just gonna go ahead and keep an eye on it and I'll bring you back when it's time to jar it up into smaller containers and give it a taste test. All right, you guys, so I am not gonna lie to you. My first batch of honeydew melon kvass went south. It turned out that a few days later, I think I ended up doing it for five or six days, it ended up getting a pink fuzzy mold on top. So I went ahead and got rid of that, and then a couple weeks later, I'm trying it again. So I did exactly that in this batch. Um, I did it, I followed the recipe that I did prior exactly to the tea, but I didn't wait as long to rebottle it, which is what we are going to do right now. Ideally, you would go ahead and go down to the brew shop and get some beer bottles that are specifically made for pressure. But right now, I don't have that. I'm not gonna do that today. Um, I have such a small batch, I think I'll be able to get away with it, but we'll find out. Um, so I'm just gonna use kombucha bottles. I figure this, when I purchased this, it had high pressure contents in it, so hopefully it'll be good for my kvass. I'll let you know if I have any explosions, of course. So what we're gonna do with this, we're gonna go ahead and use a funnel, a wire mesh strainer, and cheesecloth. We're just gonna go ahead and strain it out into our jars. I think it's as easy as it sounds. I don't even know if I need the strainer. I have been going through and burping this every single day. It smells really good. There has been a lot of bubbly activity. A lot. That is what it looks like for now. I am leaving plenty of space at the top, and honestly, that's because the fermented homestead told me to. I'm getting this technique, not this recipe, but this technique off of what Anna at the fermented homestead did with her pear kvass. So, that's what we're doing. Okay, so out of that, I ended up with three jars, or three bottles. There's a lot of room in a couple of these. <clears throat> so I'm gonna go ahead and taste test this guy. It's the fullest one. Mm. Interesting. It's not sweet. That's very hard to explain. Hmm. I'm gonna try kombucha. Nope. 
totally different. <laughs> I'm not quite sure the words to describe what it is at this stage, but I am very, very excited to see what it's gonna be like in a few days. It's fresh, it's not zingy, it's not tangy, it's mellow, it's just very pleasant. Very mellow and very pleasant. Does it taste like honeydew melon? I'm not so sure about that. Maybe it does. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and leave these out on the counter to further ferment for, I don't, I'm trying to remember what it said. I think it was like three to five days. So I'm just gonna leave it here. I'm gonna keep an eye on them. These, these lids will start to bubble a little bit if it gets too much pressure inside. I've seen that happen with these kombuchas several times. Um, so I'll just keep a close eye on it throughout the weekend and then we will go ahead and give it a taste test after we put it in the fridge. So after that three to five days of allowing it to ferment out on at room temperature, then we're gonna pop it into the fridge and then you can go ahead and consume it as you wish after that. And the refrigeration will slow down the fermentation. Okay, so here we are. We had our kvass out on the counter for three days. I think it was actually closer to two and a half. And then I was noticing a lot of the lids were bubbling up quite a lot. So I went ahead and stuck them in the fridge and I think that was three days ago. So now we're gonna go ahead and give it a try. Nice and cold and hopefully beautifully refreshing. Ooh, that's a good sign, I think. We have carbonation. Oh, doesn't that look beautiful? Cheers. It's good. Yeah. It's bubbly. It's got this particular something on my tongue that I'm really not sure how to explain it, what it is. It's simple. Gosh, it's just, it's delightful. I really, really like this. It's not an overwhelming flavor at all. You can hear the carbonation. Can you hear it? <laughs> Mm -mm. This was a very successful experiment. Yeah. It's just, it's simple and refreshing. This makes me want to try this same technique with other melons or fruits. I just got some beets growing in the garden. Next, I'm definitely also going to try beet kvass because I absolutely adore beets. Pickled beets, all beets, roasted, everything. I love beets. So we'll definitely have to be giving that a try in the near future. And then my beets are about this tall right now, so it'll be a little bit. I definitely recommend that you guys go ahead and give this a try. It is fantastic. Put this over ice, take it on a picnic. You could even spike it. Although I'm not sure how that would change the probiotics and the health benefits. Well, that's going to do it for today. I hope that this inspires you guys to try different ways of fermenting foods and drinks. Thank you for joining me today on the Hamakua Homestead. I'll see you again soon.